Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, the question is, can white win this game? Look at the position, look at the number of pawns that black has, blocking up pretty much the entire 6th through 3rd rank here, just this big box, and your, your goal is to see if you can figure out if white can win this. So take a moment, see if you can devise a plan, and if you can, explain why that plan works, and if you think that black can hold, explain why, maybe in your head, try to see if you can justify why you think that. Okay, before I share the answer here, I would just quickly encourage you to subscribe. Half of the income that I earn in this channel goes directly to charity, so every free subscription helps me out a lot, and it helps out charity as well. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. It's first important to note that we only have three legal moves. Right now we have queen g2, we have bishop c1, and then rook e2. So I'm sure you saw that if you gave this problem a moment or two. It's important to note that queen g2 is not a good move at all because it actually will draw the game, or if you're not careful, it will lose the game. So after king g1, the pawn takes, you pretty much only have one thing that you can do. Black can move their king anywhere, and you only can really just move your bishop back and forth. right? If you ever try to move your rook, you will lose the game. So moving the bishop back and forth is the only thing that makes any sense, and this would be a draw. In case you don't believe me, on the rook move, you make this move, d takes e, and how are you stopping both promotions? You want to block, that's fine, that would be stalemate, but you don't have to take that way because, look, fancy little move there, waiting move, and now this is going to be checkmate. Nice, right? I like that little waiting move. Okay, so queen g2 does not work. What if you look at these two moves? Does it make a difference which one you go with? How does black respond? All those types of things you should have already considered in your calculation. So let's think about it. Let's look at bishop c1. And I think the way I'm going to divide this is if black tries to take a passive approach and doesn't want to capture the pieces versus if they try to capture your pieces and try to see if they can win. So let's see in both cases. So in a lot of these cases, black can just move their king just anywhere. They can run around here if they want. They can stay around here if they want. Either way, they move the king. How do you make progress aside from moving the bishop back and forth? Well, the only move that you really have is this rook move. And you have to ask yourself, if you're the black pieces, do I capture this ever or do I not? Let's look at both situations and hopefully you'll see the point. So let's say black never wants to capture. Black wants to just keep these pawns held, saying you're never going to break in. What does that mean for white? So, maybe black moves their king. Well, white just says, okay, I'm going to pile up on this pawn, and I'm going to see if I can break through. Okay, that, that makes sense, but remember, we're saying as black, we're not going to capture, right? This is one kind of philosophy that black can employ, that being a very passive, non-capturing philosophy. Okay, so king e6. And if this takes, you recognize that if you do capture... That will maybe allow them to push and then throw a knight in. So as black, you don't want to capture. You say, okay, fine, I'm not capturing. I'm just going to keep moving my king. Nothing wrong with that, right? Well, it turns out this actually does not win. And it's important to understand why. So after king d6, rook back to d2. And then what do you do as black? You just continue to move the king. We'll just move the king there. And what is happening? What's happening with white? How do they continue to make progress? Here's where it gets cool. You first move the king, king e1. And then what's, what's the goal here? The goal is to move the queen here and eventually sacrifice this pawn. Sacrifice the queen for this pawn. And maybe you see that. So you say, okay, as the black king, maybe once they get into a position to take, I'll defend this. So maybe I'll go king b6. And then queen f1, saying, I'm going to hit this pawn. So if you do something like this, for example, I will capture, 
and if you take me, I push. If you don't take me, my queen is in and I'm fine. So instead of going here, maybe you protect this. This idea now, if I capture, now I can take with the king and there's a little bit more that has to be done here. It seems like you can't really make any progress in this position. So after king f1, or sorry, after king to b5 and queen f1, you can just make a waiting move if you would like. Maybe something like this. Bishop g1 saying I need the king to get away from this diagonal. And once that happens, you should be good. So h2, for example, you know, what else are you going to do? You move your king like that. Queen takes, and all of a sudden, you are lost. Okay, so what's the point here? Let's go back. The point is that black cannot just sit still and allow white to capture away because eventually you break through with the rook and then you move the king and you break through with the queen on this square on c4 okay so what if instead of letting white break all the way down break down all these pieces and break all the way through what if instead black says okay i recognize that i can't just do nothing i'm gonna have to capture at some point so what did they do well, let's go back. Instead of not capturing, what if they capture immediately? Does it matter whether they capture with the D pawn or the F pawn? So not really. Both of them are going to be a win for white, and here's why. So if you capture with the D pawn, which is the best move because kind of connecting the fork and you're keeping this still, which allows this pawn to be immobile, king E1, and now it looks kind of funny, right? Look at this. This like connection of pawns, this little clump. But it seems like you really don't get anywhere because as white, I'm just going to move this, you know, pawn, sorry, this bishop or this king, get the queen in. Eventually I'm going to sacrifice something somewhere. The question is, what am I going to sacrifice? And how is it going to work? So if the black king just moves around, I play king d2, saying you can take me or not, it doesn't matter. And then let's just say the king keeps moving around. Here's what's so cool about this. Queen e1, saying, I'm going to attack this. I'm attacking this. Maybe I'll attack that one day. Maybe I'll sack there. Okay, so if you do this, queen takes h2. Or sorry, e2. If you take here, it should be pretty obvious, given the variation I was just showing, I'm threatening to sacrifice here. So you pretty much have to take me. If you don't take me, maybe something like this, I think it works to play this move, right? Let me think about this in real time. No, maybe not, actually, because if I, if I take here, let me see this in real time. If I take here and take here, this would be a draw because I have no piece that can get here. My knight can't get out, and this bishop is not going to ever move. So that would be a draw. So let's go back. So in this position, actually, you have to do some more maneuvering. This is amazing. So in this position, after the uh, king move, you can play the king back. And what's the difference here? What am I threatening? I think now I'm threatening to get my piece around, maybe even take here. Whoa. So, okay, I think that's going to be the idea. Let's keep looking. That's the beauty of solving these puzzles in real time. Okay, king e6, get closer. Let's get closer with the, with the king if we want, but I think I'm going to break through. Personally, I think this is the better move. Let's go for it. I don't trust the engine in some of these lines. Queen takes f3. Okay, now what's the point here? Well, I need to use my pieces. Because if I can use my pieces, I can win the game. And if you take in either direction, this way, this way, if you do this, what does that do for me? Well, that frees up this pawn to move, which in turn frees this knight to move here. So in this position, e4 is a killing move. Not only do you let the bishop in, you let the knight in, and then these guys can come around here, block some stuff off, attack things, and win the game pretty easily. Okay, so what do you do here as black? It doesn't really matter. F takes, that's fine. I would play bishop f4, I'd play knight here, I'd wait for the king to lose time, tempo. I always have a tempo. I always have many. I have a temp. I have many tempi. Okay, so this is going to be a win. If you want to see exactly how it's done, feel free to play with the position in the description. You go here. There's not really anything you could do as black. 
you want to keep guarding this pawn, you can't really do that forever because you run out of tempo, right? You have to move away. I take this. I go back. I go there. It's going to be an easy win. So what am I saying through all that? I'm saying that this queen eventually gives herself up. So what if instead you take the queen? Okay, let me go back. So when I sack the queen here, what happens if you take the queen? King takes, but what am I doing with that move? Taking this pawn, or sorry, taking this queen now allows this pawn to push, which creates new opportunities for my knights. So that doesn't work. And you might ask yourself, what if instead of the, this whole idea of having to give up the rook, what if instead of taking with the d-pawn, I take with the f-pawn, or I take the other way around? It doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, no matter what, you go this way, like I was saying earlier, that's going to free up this square. You see the point here? So what is black's best resistance? Well, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to play this exact position against the computer, particularly in an advanced 3200 rated computer. Let me click on this. It might look weird for a moment. Give me one second. Okay, that's probably good enough. And let's see if I can beat a 3200 rated computer with all the things I was just showing. So bishop c1, king moves. Now let's get this rook in the action here and here. And now we were talking about king d2 and then queen e1. And now here's where it gets fun. I'm going to go for it. Sacrifice. And then I'm going to go for it right here. Do I play this or this? I'm not so sure. Let's play that. Oh. Now let's see. What do you do here? I think I'm going to have to sacrifice on this square or on this square. Let's see. So let's do some calculation here. This is a real computer. What, 3200 it says. So if I take on one of these squares, they're going to have to capture back. I can recycle the next knight in, try to sack again. So let's, let's calculate. If I sacrifice on e4, they take, let's say they take with this pawn. If they take with that pawn, I bring this one in, and I have only one defender, which means that I can sacrifice again. Oh my gosh, look at that. So knight takes, pawn takes, knight f2, the king moves maybe. Knight takes again, pawn takes again. How do I break in? That's the thing. It's not clear that I can break in in that position. So let's go this way. What if I knight takes? Well, that's what I should do. What if I move back and then sack here? Let's do that. I don't know if the sacrifice works. King f1. Here, here. Okay, I'm going to go for it. So it's either going to work or I'm going to lose. So, oh, I can't move my king here, though. So how about this move? Attack this one. Okay, I have a feeling I'm on the right path here. This is kind of, I wanted to not prepare every single variation. I wanted to have fun with it. Let's take it. I think I can win this. Like this, yep. Okay, I got this now. Look at this. Do you see how instructive it is to use your pieces? I'm going to win this just fine. Just no stalemates, no stalemates. So here, and then here, let's see. I'm always trying to be as precise as possible. It does not matter. Just don't stalemate the king. Right here, they have only one square. That's mate. Look at that. This is game over. I can move that. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that. It's kind of fun for me to see all the way back from that initial position. So try it out. See if you can beat the computer. That was a 3200 rated computer. I'm not rated quite anything close to that because I'm a human being. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to subscribe. I tried something different this time, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know. Give me some suggestions. I'm really open to it. But that's it for now. Thanks so much. Bye. <music>